Man like DJ Status, DJ Double, DJ Every Charlemagne, Angela Yee. <laughs> we are the Breakfast Club. I've been wanting to do that for time, innit? Good morning, everybody. It's <laughs> They're the only guys that get away with the same intro every show. I Good think- morning, it's DJ Envy Charlemagne, God, Angela Yee. We are the Breakfast Club. We've got a special guest in the building. Good morning. Anyway, guys, I want to talk about tempos today, bro. I want to talk about BPMs, bro. Because I, th- I think I said it to you in a random conversation. I got stuck at this tempo one time in a rave. And I was like, this is the lost tempo, bro. Yes. It's oh. like uh, <laughs> it's like it could be an episode of Indiana Jones, mate. Oh, Indiana, Indiana Stylus. Jones and the lost tempo. Indiana Stylus and Trust the lost me. tempo. Bro. bro, when you said that on the phone to me, I was laughing for about <laughs> 10 minutes straight. Fuck me, the lost tempo. It's real out here, man. Like, I'm, I'm sure every DJ is different, but for me, my lost tempo. <laughs> <laughs> the lost. DJs were late, man. Uh, Help me out. The lost tempo for me is like... Hold on, before you go into the range... Go on. Fully explain the meaning of the lost tempo. Okay. Yeah, I should have thought about that. Let me just break it down. I got a bit gassed to jump the gun. It was that Breakfast Club intro. The lost tempo, right, is when you're manoeuvring around a set. So you say, like, you start at 100 BPM, like you're rinsing off a couple of hip-hop bangers. Before you know it, like, the, the BPM starts trailing, you're getting higher and higher. And then before you know it, you're like, yo, I'm lost. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, before uh, you know it, you're at like 110 and you're like, the lost tempo, bro. Yeah. Where do I go? You play and you're like, you're gassed. Three, four songs in, you, your tempo's risen. You're like 114 and that's it. Like, you may as well be in a field on your own. Yeah. With no music. You are like, out there, bro. You are fully exposed. So the lost tempo is like, when you get to that tempo and you're like, you, you're feeling out, but you don't really know how to maneuver around it. Or... You, you can manoeuvre around it. Like, I'm not saying there ain't no rhythms there or, like, you get lost there and that's it, you're stuck. I just feel like it's a tempo range that you can't really flex too much with or... I don't know, man. Just, I just don't really mess with it too tough, innit? So where is your lost tempo? My lost moment? tempo is, like, 110 to 116, bro. 110. One, 110 nah, to, like, even, 116, 118. For me, it's even Maybe even a little bit lower. I've got a, my, mine's quite a lot wider. That's when you get to, eight, once you get to 118, <clears throat> you can mess with, like, housey stuff and go into a bit more progressive. Yeah, so that's if you're in an open format. Yeah, you, yeah. If I'm, you're doing a hip-hop club, that's more different. So you get up as no, far as, like... you've got the 120s, which you just break them down to 60, though. Right, well, exactly. That's where so all them can mess with. Uh, yeah, I'm, see, I'm more comfortable from about... Definitely from 108, 108 BPM. 108 is a good tempo right now. But like, if you get it from 109 onwards, bruv, that's that's delving towards the lost tempo. Oh, we just said it then, like, at the minute, 116 is doing a few bits. Mabel's got out some bangers, like, there's a lot of 108. Calvin Harrison yeah, party next man. door, but that's not really... It's just I play that song sped up. I speed that song up even more, and it Make sounds it better in the club. Yeah, man, it sounds miles better, bro. Yeah. And, like, 108 is, like one of the popping tempos right now with the afro beat or that afro swing kind of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. but the minute you move away from that i yo i get to 108 10 and i'm like nah i'm not looking to get lost tonight so <laughs> i've not got my compass in it so <laughs> i'm coming back down bro yeah i do the same and i transition from that area f- to either actually not so much at the moment because there's a couple of like 55 BPM bangers, but it's a been no, nah, it's it's been a couple years. You know, since for a fat bear man, are going to be in the comments flinging all these BPM songs that was. Now, yeah, right? I know. Yeah, but, but you can play it. Off the top of my head, yeah. So if like two years ago, right, I'm probably going from 110, and I'm going to start flexing on like, Krepton Conan, don't waste my time, or or Drake, what's the. Uh, Worst, worst behavior. Yeah, yeah, worst is I had now. to sing it in my head. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're the ones where you can half the lost tempo and start fresh again and oh, climb. You can tempo. climb, start climbing back up because it's fine. But yeah, that lost Obviously tempo. you got transitions now, so you can maneuver around. But even, you don't get many transitions that maneuver up to 116 or go down from it no. or in that range. Like, that's how lost it is. Man, don't even want to make a transition, transition to get guys. you out. <laughs> no, the, the, the transition, man, <laughs> Satoru, yeah? If you're listening, bro, or you're watching, Satori, beg yes. you make some lost tempo transitions up, to save us in them awkward situations. Yeah, big up bro. DJ City on them transitions, Big up DJ City all day, man. See, now, now, back in the day, don't want to sound like an old man again. Transitions, man never got transitions back then. Like, you had to be proper clever and calculated how you manoeuvred around BPMs. Yeah. Like, 
obviously on a technic, you only got plus eight and minus eight like on the on the tempo range. With the with the mixers having less features as well, because now you can do echoes and loops and and you can scatter out of a tune yep, yep, yep. and drop in from fresh from a new one with mm -hmm. a new tempo. But yeah, back then when the mixers. I'm trying to think back and even remember how I used to go about it. Like you would, you would normally pick one or two tempos before you went and roll you with your set that way. Like I would like pick out between like 18 or 100 and maneuver there. Or to, for me, to be honest, before Serato, BPM didn't play a part in my life. Like I knew, I just knew what songs mixed together. But I also knew that having the turntable up on plus 10, the song sounds silly. So you keep it around plus four, plus yeah, five, yeah, and yeah. It, that's, that's, it even that's then, a good point. To what, be what's, fair. what's it called? The um, what's the button on the CDJ where you push it and the voice stays the oh, same? The, oh, it puts it in key. Um, yeah, it keeps it in key. What's the button called? Anyway, it keeps it in key. That's the main point. Yeah, you can push those. <laughs> you can well, you can push those buttons now. Even Serato has one, and you can you can flex it twenty percent faster, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything still stays the same. Mm -hmm. Take that button off, and you're listening to Chipmunks. With vinyl, of course. You're listening to chipmunks if you speed it up too much. So mm -hmm. there was that range. I knew what went to, excuse me. I knew what went together, but I don't think I ever considered BPM because I had no way of counting it. And I don't. The lethal weapons. Now we're getting into some relics. Now do you remember those intro yeah, versions? They used lethal to. Weapons? They used to write they the had BPMs the BPM on, on there. Yeah, they did. But the singles didn't. Or the promos you get sent out by the record labels never did. That's true. So I, I think I just knew. But I don't know how I would go from like 103 BPM and then start playing 70 BPM. I don't know how I'd do that now. Back then, I mean. The lost tempo. But, I, even, <laughs> but yeah, for me, the lost tempo thing is a conversation that obviously every <laughs> DJ has a favourite BPM or a BPM that they don't like messing with. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like... You have them. You had them somewhere where like 100 BPM is my favorite BPM. I don't know why. Ever or just for now? No, in general, man. A, a lot of my sets maneuver around yeah. between like 95 to 105 in between. Like, I think I think generally I'm the same, and you know what? That must be because I mean, obviously, I, how, it's the house, it's, it's house the DJs are going to be different. But I was going to say it it's must the be the genre. It's the it's the genre because the tempo in our genre. That keeps the girls on the dance floor and really keeps the energy. Yep. It is that. Because even when you sometimes... go down to 70, it breaks down. It's, it's yeah. slower, but obviously you've got trap, it's heavier beats. But 100 BPM for me, that is like the perfect BPM, in my opinion. Anything above 115 in R&B is just going to be commercial. Mm -hmm. Like proper, I'm just trying to think, thinking of like Drake, too good. It's a commercial record. I'm just thinking literally off the top of my head. Take two was a very commercial record. That was like one one eight. I think. Yeah, but back in the day though, what, we used to get a couple of bangers at one feet. Like I remember Missy Elliott used to do a lot of up tempo BPM stuff that was hard. Like I remember, uh, I'm I'm really hot. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. One fifteen rhythm <clears throat> banger. But she 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 also had um, Missy did a lot over one ten. To be fair to her, that was popping. Bitch. And that's like yeah, no, I'm yeah, not calling one. her a bitch. I'm just saying, bitch <clears> was a good tune. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Oh, uh, did you hear Lady Leisha's Black Panther she freestyle? Murdered it, bro. Whoop. She murdered might be it. bringing me, might be. Murdered it. Leisha might be bringing me into the lost tempo with that. 111. Yeah. It's 111 we're BPM. In the lost tempo, bro. She's just. Lady Leisha, you've just extended. Don't get me wrong, right? Like, people, like, people are probably going to watch this and be like, what the status is gas. What's he talking about? That's not a lost tempo. But, <laughs> like, this is just my personal opinion. Like, when I move up to that tempo, man, I'm like. It's one of them strange situations Feeling where out, like, because because of the tempo of it, it's the energy you're building up. So you're going from 100, the and, then you're through 105, tempo. then you're into the 108, then you get past 110, and that's where like there's a there's a tempo in the room. Do you know what I mean? It's got energy, but then when you get to that 116, if you're playing just an R&B club or a hip hop club, and it's, if it's a house club or if it's one of these open format commercial clubs, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Because from that, that's when you transition into the into the house stuff and you can go from there and then you're sailing. Once you've done your house, you can cut it to like the 65 BPM. You can mix, bow that yellow goes into a house. You, you can So you can flex across the genres like that. If it's just a hip hop club, that's where the lost tempo definitely comes in. Because when, and once you get to there, so if I was to even get to 115, two free songs, and now I'm going to have to stop the music Say, say a couple and things. say something That's on the, the mic like you're, like you're a host mm. so like you've got that like 
an easy escape if you like. Yeah. Like like you ain't getting lost because you can just call for help. No, but like. still, you know, no, 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 but there is there, trust me, even when you host, there is a lost tempo. There is definitely lost tempo. Some people say that like, that might not use a mic and then Yeah. There's no easy way out. Do you know what I mean? So then how do you maneuver it, away from it? But you know, even with that said, I've seen some DJs play, they they don't confine their sets to BPMs. Okay. Sometimes they literally they don't mix. They will just and this isn't a criticism, just this is an songs. observation. Select the select they might have it. a song at 86 BPM, that's a banger, plain Jane. Boom, bang that one in. As soon as that one's done, let's drop down, throw KMT in. As soon as KMT's done, let's jump up to 70 BPM and throw this in. Like look alike. Do you know what I mean? And they literally they will just drop in. I think there is a lot of drop that of the now. tune. There is a lot of <clears> jumping <throat> around with tempos in clubs. Um, to me, like I've seen a couple of people do it. Um and and it works. Big up scandalous actually. He he does that. Depending he, what's on the floor, like sometimes you can you can bounce on the maneuver around it. Um, I'm a bit too I don't know if I think I'm not think, snappy like that though. Like, I'm a you're bit, gonna jump to a well, tempo, no, you gotta the, stay there for a little bit. But the like, way Scandalous does it, for example, it works. Okay. And that's how like when I last time I saw him play, he did it. And you know when you're thinking you're watching another DJ, and that's not the way I would do it, but I learnt from it because it worked. And so now suddenly he's taught me something about my sets that I don't have to stay within. I don't have to figure, right, I'm in 100. I want to get down to 70. How can I do it through songs and make it make sense? That's the way my brain works. Okay. If I'm, on, I'm at 100 and I want to get to this song, I can't just go from this song to 70 unless I'm speaking. Yeah. Then I can cut the music, speak and do it. You could be creative but, with it, man. Like, yeah, well, that's the thing. And now I think of, right. Especially with the controllers today. <laughs> I'm joking, but I'm joking, guys. But, um, Come on. This is going to become a thing, isn't it? Yeah, this is going to become it is, a it thing. Is, it is, it is, it is. Um, I'm sorry, man. I'm but yeah, I have to think of a path of how to get from 100. This is just how my weird brain works. And I try and plan my way down to that VPM. Whereas, like, what I've seen, what Scandal has showed me was actually, no, you know what? If that's a banger and this is a banger, just play it. Generally, the general public isn't going to turn around and be like, Wait a minute, you didn't mix those two. I want them to flow. That's what, and that's yeah, what same, I want. Man. Whether, do you know what I mean? Like, it's always got a link. I like the whole set to flow, like, really. That's why I'm talking about these lost tempos, because when you get there, like, I like to maneuver around my tempos, like, quite smooth and seamless. I don't like just jumping around. I might jump between genres a little bit, but tempos will always, like, move in the right way, and I won't be like 70, 100, down to 80, up to 110. Like, like like that, I'll always try and be yeah. smooth and be smooth with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, Satoru, Satoru's transitions definitely. Oh, Sator yeah, big up DJ City, man. Like, they, they, they definitely they help. changed the game with the transitions and that, man. Like, you know what? One of, one of the best ones they've got is the Dave one, No Words. I'm not even sure I got that. 75 up to 100, mate, in one swift movement. But the way he's done that, the seamless, isn't it? smooth, bro, him, smooth. Man. Like, yeah, it's nice. With the with the transitions and stuff, I was thinking the other day. Yeah, you you do a lot of mixes and that. When you're in the clubs, do you play other DJs' refixes and stuff? Yeah. So man, if another DJ time. makes a mashup, do you play it? Hundred percent, hundred percent, man. I make a lot of my own in it. So like, mm. and I do give some out, but then I do, I, but I hold a lot for, this, yeah. for that for the for the, specific, the reason of it's my. I want my set to sound like. You know I mean, it's my. My thing, if I give everything away. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to work. But yeah, I, pl I play a lot of DJ edits. Um, D James, I rinse his edits. Like, mm -hmm. I, was, I just played with him in Newcastle on Sunday. Like, he's a genius with it, bro. I don't know anyone that has more edits than that guy. Like, he's a machine, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's a machine. He wants to come on the podcast as well. Let's bring him in, man. Let's, let's, we can open this topic, topic up even more. See, my, my thing on it is, I do play couple but i don't have a lot of other people's remixes in my um i'm talking about mashups not like i mean there's a few kid cut up things that are yeah, actually yeah, good yeah. for you're like talk, like you're talking about a prop like reach, i'm talking about like fix. a real actual proper mashup and it's because i do use my own or i do them live with the acapella and the instrumental yeah, in the club yeah, yeah. so I, I but i don't know in a way i kind of feel like i'm stealing someone else's work it, and it sort of feels it feels a little bit like I'm cheating the crowd. Does like, that make sense bro, to you? Bro, 100% like, man. And like, 
I've known DJs over the years that I've give out a lot of the refixes and then a lot of DJs take them and run with them and they're out there yeah. passing off their sets like that's all their shit. Yeah. Um, and these DJs have stopped sending out stuff for that reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get that, like, I get what you're saying. I'm not out here trying to steal everyone's remixes though and claim yeah, it was yeah. my own. I've been making my own refixes since about 10, 10 plus years now. Since yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you used to get the acapellas and the instrumentals on the vinyls back then. So you could just do them yourself. But I can see, like... Also, from the... It, it falls on both sides, man. Like, if you're out there biting and <coughs> passing off everyone else's work as your own and you're cheating it, then yeah. I had a couple. And I remember, actually, probably my most successful one that I ever did was Temper T's Next Hype on BMF. Okay. On a yeah, BMF yeah, yeah, instrumental. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I don't know how I did it, right? Because I, I, I know how I made it, but I made it and it took, it took me literally three minutes to make. I just slid the acapella over the instrumental. They're the same tempo. It worked. I, I rendered it, started playing it. Then I had the thought, I'm going to email it out to some people. And I started sending it out to a couple of big DJs. And then I remember it was a Saturday night and I was driving with, uh, I had Leanne in the car and a cousin in the car as well. And BMF came on. And after BMF, bruv, my remix came on. On Radio 1. Yes. Come on. And mate, I nearly crashed the car. I was so <laughs> excited. <laughs> you nearly did a temper and, and I remember, I pulled over. And I remember, like, I was so gassed. This is my production. It wasn't. It's just a refix. You know what I mean, it's not like it. It took me three minutes to make. So I'm not like, at the time, I was so gassed. And then the mix continued. And the song went on. Next song, next song. No mention of me whatsoever. And I got my back up about that a little bit because I thought, right, sending out these, I've just helped, I've just helped someone shell their set and not even got a mention. And it and it kind of dawned on me. I mean, this is a few years ago, obviously, when BMF and Next Hype. So I mean it's nearly 10 years ago, I'm talking like, or whatever, 2009, 2010. But I just kind of thought. It's a very thankless job doing edits for people, it is, it is. sending and them out, and then you other just nailed people it, bro. Credit. That's because what the words they said to me, it like pretty much on that. Yeah, it, it is a thankless because job. Like I've heard D James's refixes, mm. and they are very good. Mm. And like I don't play them in my set. I maybe I might even have a couple of his that I play in my set. I can't recall, but I've got hundreds. There's it's no <laughs> particular reason. It's just because my set is made up of whatever I've collected so far. Do you know what I mean? But if I was to play his stuff in the set, he doesn't get thanked for that. Mm. And I'm not necessarily, he's not even in the club, so I'm not going to be like, yo, shouts to D James for making this for me. Like, yeah, well, that, that doesn't it, fit. Like, how, do you know what I mean? Like, Unless it's on radio where you can actually say, right, this is a big bad man edit from D James. Oh, you James, put it in the track list then, so like when it got, like, obviously I did the mixed residency for like two and a half years. So yeah. like, you, was, you would give you track listings in, and obviously you, I used a lot of refixes in that. Yeah. But always credited. Yeah. Always. So like, these guys will get the mentions on, on the Radio 1 website, the BBC website, and then they can then go screenshot that, use it for their own stuff, which is dope. But how how do you go around, be, like you can't just pick up a mic and be like, yo, this is thing is remix. I think a way around it is like spreading it through your socials. So yeah. if you're in a club, like letting off heat that belongs to someone else, show, yeah, yeah, yeah. show, show someone. Take a video, like, tag them in it. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've not done it I've been out and played club, like other refixes in the club and not sent love out on social media because mm. just, I'm just not thought to do it. It's not about like, doing it every yeah, time. Yeah, not a spiteful like... thing, but I can see why some DJs would be like, okay, well, maybe not send them out no more, like not really getting much mm. out of it. It's a thankless job and other people are shining off, off the back of me yeah. kind of thing. So it, in a way, yeah, I get it, but it's... It's, it's a tough one, isn't it, man? Like, I play a lot of them. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and tag them in a post on socials or... I'll always make sure the track's up if it's on a guest mix on radio and whatnot. I like them, and especially in your mixes and that, I think they sound ill. I, I, like, I they, always sound, they sound, like, they sound week, good. Do you know what I mean? Like, something different, like, and just put a flip on. Not only that, I like hearing what other people do with the songs. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I like, I, I like hearing refixes and mashups and stuff from other people. But I just, I don't know, sometimes, I just think I'm surprised like they've got to be a very selfless DJ to be able to give that out to everyone. 100%. Knowing that as well, the DJ community isn't the most rewarding place to give it out to because mm-hmm. people aren't always shouting out the, the ones that made it. It's very few people do it. Like, and I just think, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. But if I, I'll, I do my edits, I do my mashups, I don't send them out anymore, but 
with that said, if someone are, if someone's in the someone club and they and they heard me play it, and they come over, if it's not something I'm doing live, if it's one I've made previously, if they hear it and they're like, "What's this?" I always have in the tags, you know, DJ double refix. So if they're looking at the screen or whatever, they'll see it's, I've made it. If they're like, "Oh, can you send it to me, please?" Drop me an email address, bro. I'll send it over. Of course, I don't mind. I did try right. mail out, man, and I set one up, and I was like, right, "I'm gonna stick to this, and like, I'm gonna send out stuff every week because I make like refixes every week without fail." So I was like, "Well, I'm start sending them out," and I did like two, three mail outs, and I built up a, a database of like a thousand DJs, man. Like everyone hit up, sent emails, got it all built up, mm. and then I just after two or three posts, I just didn't do it. And I don't know why, man. Like it's a combination of all of them things, I guess we just mentioned. Um, but if someone wants to holler me and say like, I, I'll get inboxes and say, yeah, yeah send them out your week, sort of, and then I, I will like send them out and mm. people come and chase me down for them. But yeah, after two, three weeks of trying it, I fell back on it instantly. So yeah. I can see why DJs fall out of love with doing that. Like, mm. unless you like contributing to like, I know I look at Bibs and D James and these guys like are official contributors to DJ City. Yeah, Mr. So, Bibs like, actually, that, that is one that out I've there played a few charting. Years. Man are seeing them at dominating top of the charts. Everyone's out there. Everything's tagged up right. Like them guys are doing it in in the right way. Yeah. Because they're pushing it out through Where, an official avenue. Yeah. Like, so I mean, maybe they maybe we get them in as a guest and ask them this. But where's the benefit for them other than other DJs know their name? Like well, where, where well, what's well, the end? You're, game? you're getting known for for your techers, aren't you? You're the remix guy. Like mm. it, credibility. People knowing that you got the, the skills and the minerals to make dope remixes, like there's yeah. not much more you can get out of that. Is it really? Besides, like obviously them guys are Mr. Bibbs and D James for me are like two of the sickest like re refixes. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, Mr. Bibbs is a name. Um, I've not actually I've met him once before actually, but um, Bibbs so I, I don't know shout, him personally. Shout out Bibbs, shout out Urban but Fusion, shout I have out I have played his um I have played his mashups in the club before. There's one or two I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. We ran away with this one, didn't it? <laughs> did run away, bro. We did run away from the lost tempo, from the lost tempo to the reef. We got lost. We literally, we got lost in the in we, the cast, mate. Yeah. Oh god.